Hi everyone, um, welcome to the first video lecture. Uh, we'll start with uh, very simple things, but there will be a few things that will be new to you. Okay, so we start with uh, electric charges and current. Um, so the first thing is to define the units we're going to use. The SI unit for electric charge is the Coulomb, as you know. SI stands for System International, so that's the system where we use kilograms, meters, and seconds for uh, you know, mass, distance, and time. For charge, we use a Coulomb. That was named after uh, Charles Augustin de Coulomb, who lived at the end of the 18th century. We'll hear more about him a bit later. And here's a picture, a drawing. Okay, now, uh, as you know, matter that surrounds us is mostly made of three types of particles. Here they are. So there's the, uh, the electron, the proton, and the neutron. Now, uh, just a couple of comments. So here you have their masses and their electric charges. By the way, um, you don't have to, uh, to, learn, uh, to learn anything uh, here by heart. Uh, in the test, you'll be given all those, those constant. Uh, just a couple of comments. First, you notice the electron is much, much lighter than the protons and neutrons by a factor of about 2,000. Uh, also, it's interesting to notice that protons and neutrons have almost the same mass, but a neutron is just a tiny bit heavier than a proton. Um, so if you look at electric charges, neutrons are neutral, uh, of course, and the charges of the electron and of the proton, protons, um, their charges are exactly opposite to one another. So they differ only by their sign. Even if we're writing those numbers with many more uh, sig figs, uh, the values will be exactly the same apart from the sign. Why do protons have exactly the, the same charge as electrons aside from the sign? Uh, nobody knows. So the reason why those two values are equal um, apart from the sign is totally unknown. It's a mystery of physics and people are still trying to figure out why. Okay, there are many other particles in nature, uh, but uh, for us this semester, we, we won't have to deal with them. If you go in physics or in astrophysics, for example, if you take the astrophysics course um, at Champlain, uh, you'll hear more about neutrinos, for example. They play a very important role in stars. But for us this semester, well, we don't need to, to worry about them. Okay, now, um, because this number, 1.602 times 10 minus 19 Coulomb is so uh, important, we give it a special symbol and a special name. We call it the elementary charge. The elementary charge, uh, we use the symbol lowercase e, and we define it to be plus positive 1.602 times 10 minus 19 Coulomb. Okay, so whenever you see in an equation this factor e, it stands for this number positive. So with, that con with this convention, okay, so um, with this convention, the electric charge of a proton is just equal to e or plus e. The electric charge of an electron is minus e. Okay. Now, let's look at the simplest circuit, circuit we can draw. A uh, simple battery uh, with the positive terminal, so the plus side, the longer side here of the battery represents the positive terminal of the battery, and then you have a negative side here, which is a negative terminal connected to a resistor. Okay, this is very simple. And you know that you, have, you can use the voltage across the battery to find the current using Ohm's law. The voltage um, is equal to the current times the resistance. Okay, this equation, we'll get back to it later. For now, I, I won't say much about it. We're going to focus on the current. Okay. What is a current? Physically, a current is the flow of charges. You have charges. If you have a bunch of charges moving, you have a current by definition. Uh, in this uh, simple circuit like this, uh, the current will always come out of the positive terminal and flow into the negative terminal. So like this. That's the direction of the current for this circuit. Away from, in, the, in the wires, it goes away from the positive terminal and it enters the negative terminal of the battery. Now, uh, there is, um, well, okay, so in this case, this is, if you have a circuit where there's only one battery, you always have the current flowing out of the positive terminal and into the negative terminal. Um, soon we'll do more complicated circuits where there will be, for example, several batteries, or there will be other things like capacitors and inductors, 
And in those cases, it can happen sometimes that uh, in certain, certain uh, batteries, the current will flow into the positive terminal. But for now, if you have only one, cap uh, one battery and just a bunch of resistors, you're safe with the fact that the current will always flow out of the positive terminal. Okay, now there is a catch here. There's a subtle point about current. Current was, um, electrical circuits were, were analyzed and discovered way before people discovered the electrons and protons and so on. So back then, uh, people didn't know about electrons and protons, so they didn't know really what, what was happening at the atomic level inside a circuit. So what they did is that they defined the direction of the current as the flow of positive charges. So here, the current goes this way, because it's, if you think of a positive charge, remember from high school, positive charges repel, well, like charges repel, positive, positive repel, negative, negative repel, opposite charges attract, a plus and a minus will attract. So if you think of a current that's made of positive charges, you have positive charges here, they're repelled by the positive terminal and they're attracted by the negative terminal, so they flow this way. But the catch is that now we know that actually what is moving inside a circuit, uh, an ordinary uh, circuit we, we're going to study in the labs, for example, what is moving is not positive charges, it's actually negative charges, it's actually electrons that are moving, not, um, let's say, protons. So the convention was that to show the current as the direction of motion of positive charges, and we kept that convention even though we know now that it's actually electrons moving in the circuit. So when you draw a circuit like that, we see the current goes this way, it's the flow of positive charges, but we know that actually it's really electrons moving, and the electrons, they actually move in the opposite direction to the current. So what's happening is that um, if you look at the microscopic level, at the atomic level, you will not see, if you have a current going to the right here, let's say in the upper branch here at the top, if you have a current going to the right, really at the atomic level, if you look, what you're going to see is the electrons moving to the left. So you have to, we should keep that in mind. But in terms of solving circuit, we forget about electrons and we think as if uh, it, the current was made of positive charges moving, okay? So we're going to think of uh, fictitious, hypothetical uh, positive charge particles, po positively charged particles that don't really exist, but we're going to pretend that they are positive charges that are moving the circuit in the direction of the current. But in fact, it's really electrons moving in the opposite direction. So we'll think in terms of those fictitious positive charges. Okay, now current. What are the units of a current? Uh, well, a current is in coulombs per second, uh, and that's given a special name, uh, a, a special name for that unit called the uh, ampere, named after Marie-André Ampère, who lived also at the end of the 18th century. Okay, so by definition, one ampere is one coulomb per second, or if you write it in, with symbols, one amp is one coulomb per second. Okay. Now, what is really a current? That's just um, okay, that's just uh, uh, the definition of the unit. But what is physically a, a, a current? Well, okay. Let's say here you have you have a wire. Okay, this is like a cylinder. We we have the wire here, and in the wire there is a flow of charges. Now we take what we call a cross section so you take your wire you cut it at the center let's say or at some at any point you want and you create a surface going cutting across the wire that's a cross section so we, this is a surface okay it's really a surface going through the wire and then there is a current so there are charges moving through the wire let's say in some direction so let's say you have a current i um, going to the right again keep in mind when you say that will think as if you have those fictitious positive charges moving to the right, but really it's really electrons moving to the left. Okay, so we have a current going to the right, so we have like positive charges here, they're all moving to the right. So as they move to the right, they'll go, they, they'll, they'll get through this cross section. Okay, once you have defined that, then you can introduce the current. The current, by definition, is simply the um, it's defined like this. So it's an amount of charge 
um, of positive charges. So delta Q in that equation is an amount of charge that would be uh, positive. Okay, it's positive because we, we work in terms of those fictitious uh, positive charges. So a current is an amount of charge crossing, going through a cross section in a time delta t. Okay. Um, so here's basically, and to be exact here, what we're defining here is an average current. Okay, I'll explain uh, in the next video why uh, it's, this is an average value. So here's the basic idea. What's the basic uh, idea of the equation? You take a wire, you cut it. You, well, you don't cut it physically, but you imagine that you look through a surface going across the wire. That's your cross section. You pick a time delta t, a time interval delta t, let's say in five seconds, and then in five seconds, you measure how much charge go through the surface. That's your delta q. So you take the amount of charge that went through the surface, divide by the time, and that gives you the average current. This is really an average current. Um, okay, so this is one, um, one equation. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, the detail about doing some calculations with this. So I'll talk, talk to you soon. Okay, bye.